on the front. I'm so excited because this movie is so fun. I had the best time watching it. You know, we were so like nervous doing a reboot because the originals are so amazing. But these wonderful actors did such an amazing job. I tried to do my best too. And I think people are going to really enjoy it. You know what? I love that she's a strong, intelligent, powerful woman with beautiful, admirable ideals. She wants to bring the world of the monsters and the world of the hyphens together. But of course, the powerful men around don't listen. So like, surprise, surprise. Sounds familiar. You know, number one for fans of the graphic novels and for the movies, Mike Mignola, who created Hellboy, was with us every step of the way. He helped write the script. He was on set every day. So we were able to come with him with any questions we had, and he helped us with our characters. So I think this movie really, like, is his dream come true as well. So I think the fans are going to enjoy that. He's meant in his DNA and his genetics to bring about the end of the world, so he's kind of built for evil, but through all of his conscious will, he tries to be a good guy. And uh, I think a, a lot of times I've felt like my impulses are not so great, but I've tried to construct my reality around doing the right thing, and that just seems to really resonate with me. I mean, you know, I think we all have this beast inside of us that we're trying to tackle in some way, and that we're trying to, like, have be a positive force in the world and, and so that's something that I really relate to. Yes, it's incredible. Joel Harlow designed the makeup and applied the makeup with a team of like four other people um, and it's beautiful. I mean, it's like a, a piece of art in and of itself. It's seamless. You can get right up close to it. It was completely practical. There's no CGI. So you could actually be on set with me an inch away and you would feel like it was a real demon standing in front of you. I couldn't even see how or where they blended the edges. Um, it was incredible, you know. I mean, he's a genius. A really good thing. Which new characters? I mean, there's this one character that I love so much, but I don't think I'm allowed to say it until the film releases that he that this character is even in it. Um, so there is one sort of surprise character that I'm in love with, and I can't believe they brought him to the universe. Um, and the other. Uh, the, other, the character that I, there's so many characters that I love. I mean, I love the relationship between Hellboy and the Blood Queen, too. Like, this Nimue Blood Queen character and sort of their bond and their, you know, their draw towards each other. To me, it's very unique and very interesting. It's pretty exciting. I feel like this is one of, one of the more, like, universal things that I've done as far as, like, the entertainment world, you know? And I think 
this is kind of a big deal for me. It's something like very like there's a lot of core in it. There's like a lot of humor in it. And it's just it'll be fun to get to get it out there. Why did you do that? Um, well, because I mean, first of all, she's kidnapped by fairies. I think that's amazing. Um, and as well as. I like that in the film she's not the love interest, but she shares a deep love connection with Hellboy, and I think she knows how to balance the world of, listen, you know, like, I, I know the human world as well as this kind of, like, dealing with demons and all of that, and I think she adds a lot of heart to it and kind of just, like, builds everything together, and I think that's good. I think that's something that you have to be able to, like, balance and... I don't know, there's just a lot of heart to her. It's something that my sisters, I would be happy if they like looked up to her, you know? And I think that's kind of the main reason. I mean, I love to fight. I guess that sounds bad, but like, who doesn't want to punch things? And to do like stunts, it's like a good physical release, you know? So it's like, I loved it, it's my favorite word. Well, it's, you know, they're both monsters of uh, different sorts, and they both deal with their monsterdom in different ways, you know. And, uh, he tries to, Daimyo tries to hide it, where uh, Hellboy is more comfortable in his own skin. So uh, it's, a, it's a nice little clash right at the start, but they end up becoming pretty good teammates. I had a lot of fun shooting the transformation scene. It, it was very physical. Very raw, very gritty, and it was nice that for the character to have a release at the end of the movie for everything he was holding inside. Well, you know, I, I, I think it's a roller coaster ride. You know, it's it's action packed, it's gory. If you don't mind a little violence, there's some com there's a lot of comedy and some really good performances to boot. You know, it's it's an action film. It's a, a good old fashioned monster fight. You know, it's kind of a throwback in my eyes to sort of an 80s monster movie which is why i got into this business in the first place so you know hopefully hopefully everybody embraces that and, and has a good time with it. uh well i mean the design has already been done i mean the design was done by mike you know two-dimensional and, and then subsequently by a great many artists you know two-dimensionally after him taking his character and translating it uh, to the comic book page so what we did is we took that design, we took a, a, a variety of two-dimensional designs, our favorites, um, and translated them onto David Harbour's life cast. Uh, keeping in mind, you know, thicknesses of prosthetics, you know, we want him obviously to be able to express through whatever we did. Um, you know, it, it, it ended up being a long process, but the, the look of Hellboy was already established by Mike. Uh, and it was just a matter of translating that, you know, that comic book two-dimensional version to a three-dimensional performer. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Baba Yaga, though, uh, was a little different. Baba Yaga um, uh, two-dimensionally looks much different than our version of Baba Yaga. What I wanted to do with Baba Yaga uh, was to infuse a little more visual horror into her. Uh, so that's that's one of the you know when you're dealing with a, designing a film of this size and building a film of this size, um, you don't get a whole lot of hands on, and, and that fortunately was one of the characters that I took uh, and and actually got my hands you know into the clay and sculpted you know sculpted the character and all that. So uh, when I was doing that, I, I infused a bit more you know visually striking horror. Uh, elements to it, you know, based on, you know, sort of subconscious imagery I had seen over the years. They look forward to, I hope, a very fun movie, uh, a little darker than the Hellboy we've seen before. And for me personally, having this in New York is just like the coolest thing on earth to me. Well, let's see. The only actual BPRD guy we see is Daimyo. Uh, who's never been on film before, so that's exciting. Um, and then he's got his pal, Alice Monaghan, uh, who's not officially BPRD, but she's the other main character. So, I just wanted to get away with drawing monsters for a living. So I had no, I had no expectations, no plans. I just wanted to do something where I got to draw monsters and the kind of stories I wanted to do. So I certainly never expected to be doing it for 25 years, and never expected to be on, you know, 
a film thing. Uh, the comic book fans, I think, will be thrilled to see a lot of real direct nods to the comic. This, this film, more than any of the others, uh, references the comics very closely. So they should be happy. Then they sh and there's some surprises for them. So. Well, I think what's important is that the people adapting the material understand the material. It doesn't need to be a slavish adaptation. It doesn't have to have everything exactly the same. But you have to understand what works about the comic. So even if you change the details, you keep the feel of the thing. And that's what we've got today. In John Carpenter's The Thing, a 1992 remake of the classic The Thing from Another World, is remembered for Bob Bolton's groundbreaking practical effects. Bolton created some incredibly lifelike alien gore by using real life dead animal parts. Most of the cast and crew were repulsed by the effects, but not Wilfred Brimley, who was a rancher and avid hunter.